Okay, so in, in this video, I'm joined by Father Hugh McKenzie as we continue our review of some of the lectures of Jordan Peterson. Today, we are looking more critically at some of his ideas, particularly the confusion that is present over the nature of mind, consciousness, reality, God, creation, whether he actually veers towards panpsychism or pantheism, in his lectures that's a major concern of ours because although in the last video we saw some really interesting insights that peterson has particularly perhaps even the basis for a proof for the existence of god in this video we are going to look a bit more critically at some of his videos and explore the panpsychism or pantheism in Peterson's videos. And I think this discussion does build upon the previous video uh, where as Father Mark says we, we saw some uh, great insights really uh, but in, in, in this video we, we, we look at how they build upon those insights uh, in a way which is towards more panpsychism and pantheism and that the slight confusion that we began to highlight in the last video if it were cleared up we think uh, would lead towards the more classical transcendent Noah and Willa God of the Judeo-Christian tradition. There are certain necessary uh, things down the road from that that insight which is that attention plays a part in the way the world lays itself out um, and that one of them and one of them is that the stuff that the world is made of is partly something like attention, something like consciousness. And that has a pattern. And that pattern is the same pattern as stories. It just So at the beginning of that clip, Jonathan points out that things in the world of which we are objectively aware are partly constituted by the subject's attention and awareness but then he seems to jump to apply that to stories which of course are artifacts in which the creative constitution by the human mind is an intrinsic part of what they are but that that of course is not the case for natural physical things so it, 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 he seems to be setting up the idea that our souls are just part of the physical world, but that's not justified. And it seems to me that, that human consciousness is is presented as a pattern. And for me, I'm I'm a little bit uneasy with that phrase of, of seeing human consciousness as a, as a kind of pattern. Um, there's a danger there of, of really not recognizing the profound distinction between mind and matter that, that we want to uphold uh, from, a, from a philosophical position that's going to support Christianity. The ontological significance of consciousness is equivalent to the ontological significance of being because the mystery, the mystery question is, how is there anything without awareness of it? And, and good luck, good luck solving that issue. So in this video we've just seen, we uh, had a clip from Jordan Peterson engaging in a conversation with Dr. James Orr, who is a professor of divinity at Cambridge University. It's just a snippet and the whole conversation is really fascinating. But the snippet uh, reflects a broader worry that emerges from their conversation concerning the nature of human consciousness and reality and the potentially equivocal usage of consciousness that Peterson uh, is using in, in the discussion. It's not entirely clear that when he talks about consciousness maintaining reality, whether he's talking about our consciousness or a divine consciousness. Um, and in the very beginning of the clip, he seems to have, I think he says that being and consciousness are equivalent, which of course is a very strange thing to say. It's, it's a strange thing to say, uh, I, for at least maybe two reasons. One is that it does seem to most of us that there is existence out there of which we're conscious and I do agree with his insight that we can't really describe it with at least an implicit reference to its intrinsic relationship to us as people who are engaging with it are able to act morally indeed 
however it, it does seem that there is something out there uh, what maybe you know the scholastic tradition used to call secondary causation for instance and they believed in primary causation from God so that's that's one thing and another issue is that our involvement with that which is out there is as he's brought out a sense of awareness and focus and ability to engage with it but when we engage we're doing something different we are actually enhancing what is out there in a way that is radically dependent upon us and I do like Peterson's example uh, he's using other videos of the tree stump but that is a unique and a special fact where things are radically dependent on us and therefore there must be a different type and a, a lesser dependence if you like upon us which is to say that the stuff which is out there which we are engaging with and which intrinsically are related to us as actors uh, are more than that they, they have other relationships across their environment and their ecosystem across the whole of the cosmos yes ultimately by analogy at least it seems to a greater intelligence and, and awareness and that's where we want to go because there's a slight equivocation here it's not clear which direction Peterson's going and sometimes him and followers take us in a middle way which is ultimately pantheism your soul is your invisible part of you it's the it's the pattern the patterning of your of your being right that's what your soul is and there's a way and this is this there's a way in which that soul in in its very center right you could say that there's a, there there's a, there's a more there's a hierarchy of patterns in you and at the core of that hierarchy of pattern is god i don't want to tell you like that 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 it's the spark of the divine is at the center of every individual soul that's the manner in which we actually exist is that we contain a spark of of the divine and that so Pajo starts this clip by saying that the soul is the patterning of your being part really of the sort of hierarchy of patterns within the physical universe there's nothing intrinsic there therefore they can talk of it being patterned and it's therefore not certainly the traditional understanding within the Judeo-Christian tradition of a a spiritual, non-physical, simple, unstructured focus of knowing and willing, intellect and will, directly in the image of God. And because of that, the soul, the soul that is being as part of the pyramid, the any analogy that they then draw with God is, is going to tend towards pantheism. And therefore he's going to say, well, the divine is... Is, 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 is the deep identity of what the soul is because it is ultimately just the high part it seems and this is said I think elsewhere by particularly Padjo it's just the high part of this pyramid and the uh, which gives identity to everything else and he, uh, it is therefore just the totality as he says at one point uh, of everything and, and that is that is a, a pantheism which is, has come from the failure to distinguish matter and spirit exactly and and in fact the discussion he keeps repeating that the soul is the spark of the divine and although we do have in catholic theology an understanding that that the soul is in the image and likeness of god and that the soul is is a place is is a part of ours in which grace enters and the holy spirit interdwells in our soul it's not in the order of nature that the holy spirit uh, interdwells in our souls and and again spark of the divine we're happy to say that the the soul in a very special way is is made for god and that even in its creation the soul looks towards god we're happy to say that but the idea that the soul is like when we think of spark we're thinking of fire and a spark is is actually the same thing as the fire the fire comes from the spark and so talking of the soul as the spark of the divine it's confusing to say the least. There's this insistence in, in the Judeo-Christian tradition that God is outside of the material world and outside of time and space. And that what that does in some sense is deaden material.
It deadens matter. And then when God disappears, we're left with dead matter. So, so where's the dialogue between the, the advocates of the Judeo-Christian tradition and the panpsychists? So in this final clip, we have returned to Dr. James Orr in conversation with Jordan Peterson. And Peterson actually says outright that there needs to be a dialogue between panpsychism and Christianity, Christian theology. He seems to see some problems deriving from the transcendent God, the transcendent God separate from creation. He has discerned, he seems to have, he has this understanding of, of, of mind as creating the unities in creation, which, which we looked at in the previous video. And he has an understanding of our minds as, as co-creators. But the, part of the, the problem is he, he doesn't have a worked out distinction between God's mind and, and God's creation and our mind and our creation and the rest of the rest of creation. And so he's he wants this dialogue between Christianity and panpsychism. But in fact, the, the dialogue has to begin with with a thorough assertion of the utter transcendence uh, of Almighty God as being distinct from his creation, that he isn't immersed in creation as a uh, part of creation. Mm. And so I, I, I would want to affirm with Dr. Peterson that matter all the way down is intelligible and has an immediate relationship with mind but mind is is spiritual and therefore transcendent of matter always and it's it's in that context that we can say that yes the mind of god is totally and utterly transcendent as peterson correctly points out is intrinsic to the judeo-christian tradition but at the same time, we want to say, yes, matter energy is, is distinct from the mind of God, but intrinsically related to it. And this is our experience because we're free and matter is not free. Science has shown that matter is deterministic. And if it wasn't, it couldn't be the stage on which we act freely and responsibly and ethically and therefore our vision takes science seriously it is not imbued intrinsically with mind there is no sign whatsoever from modern science of matter energy being anything than mathematical and deterministic it is the object of mind and mind is distinct from it <laughs>